not to get all like weirdly spiritual about makeup, although isn't that what my channel is all about? I should rename my channel, Hannah Gets Weirdly Spiritual About Makeup. My name is Hannah and this is my no buy year. I must admit, I am not at my best after a long day of travel yesterday, but I'm going to film this Shop My Stash if it's the last thing I do before I eat dinner and go to sleep. I know the sun is coming in really sharply and perhaps backlighting me. It might be messing with the camera. I'm sorry if the lighting isn't very good. I'm sorry if I'm not very articulate. I'm sorry if my makeup is kind of crusty. I'm here now. I'm filming. I can't live. I can't. <laughs> I am completely incapable of filming an intro today. Let's just go ahead and get into the meat of the video. As with every Shop My Stash, first I'm going to tell you about the things I shopped my stash for last time, and then I will tell you about the things that I shopped my stash for today. So for my previous Shop My Stash, I picked this Marc Jacobs palette, and it was amazing. On account of this palette, and actually on account of a couple of things in this Shop My Stash, from last time, I'm kind of sorry to see it go. I'm sorry that this phase is ending because I've enjoyed these items so much. So this is the palette, as you may remember if you saw it before. I like it because it has some cool tone shadows in it. It's not only cool tone, there are some warm browns, there are some golds and bronzes and coppers, and you can get that out of it if that's what you want. But then it has some gray, some really deep charcoal gray, it has some lavenders, and it's got this really amazing duochrome kind of white to blue shifting shadow. And I like cool tone looks, and I'm glad that they're starting to come back in style a little bit more so that high quality cool tone shadows will be a little bit more easily available. For me, for now, this is all I need. Even if I weren't on a no buy year, I don't think I would need to buy any of the new up and coming cool tone shadow palettes because this really covers all of my bases when it comes to those really deep, smoky, purpley, bluey looks. This is an extraordinary palette. I'm sorry that it's lim it was limited edition. I think that this is either totally unavailable now or really hard to get your hands on. I already had to change the battery pack, so I'm probably in a different place and everything's probably in a different place. Bear with me. The moral of the story is just that Marc Jacobs shadows are very, very good quality and I think that this palette was a really good investment when I bought it in the holiday season in 2016. I definitely don't feel like I need to buy any more Marc Jacobs holiday palettes ever again. No matter how pretty they are, no matter anything, I don't feel like I need to collect them all. Uh, I don't feel like I need to complete the set. Uh, I have one and it's perfect and I'm really pleased with it. I'm glad I got to, to know that palette better. There were definitely shades in there that I didn't really understand were a part of my collection. I didn't really know what potential they had. There are a couple of looks that I did several times over the course of the past couple of weeks using that palette, and it's nice to know now that I have them in my arsenal. Another smash hit was the NARS Super Orgasm Liquid Illuminator, and if you haven't seen my makeup demonstration, the intense blush draping that I used this for. I will definitely put that in the cards. I used this and then I used a little mini size of orgasm blush on top of it to produce like an extreme dramatic glamorous editorial blush draping look. But if you watch that demo, you'll be able to see when I start layering this on that just one layer with a beauty blender looks great. And I used it like that a lot. I, I used it for that blush draping style of look a couple of times over the course of the past couple of weeks and I enjoyed it every time. But more often I use this just as my blush and I really love how that looks too. So I got some great use out of this. I think I probably even changed the level a little bit. I'll have to go back and look at the other video. But I just I used it and I loved it and it's definitely going to stay on my vanity 
rather than tucked away in the back of the drawer for the rest of the summer. Again, I'm glad I got to know it better. I had bought it and used it once or twice years ago. I bought it years ago and used it once or twice and then never touched it again and now it's like one of my favorite things. This is why we shop our stashes, people. Shop your stash. I cannot recommend this kind of project enough. Whether you're doing a no-buy year or not, whatever's going on with you, whether your collection is big or small, just try it. I also made use of these foundations from The Ordinary, the Coverage Foundation and the Serum Foundation. Um, I, I like both of these products too. The Coverage Foundation I did find to be a little bit not as tenacious as I would have liked. I think it's prone to taking a fingerprint. Like if you put it on, it it's not that it doesn't set at all, but for example, I would like put my ha my chin in my hand during the course of the day, or I would touch my face at some point, and then I would look and I would see that I had left like a, a dent in the foundation or a mark in the foundation in the way that my NARS Sheer Glow doesn't do. I'm not like a connoisseur of foundations. I'm not the best person to review foundations because I've only ever owned a couple of them and I don't wear them regularly. I was using these foundations in lieu of concealer to brighten like the the high points of the face and smooth out my skin tone a little bit. They worked really well in that capacity and again I think I'll continue to reach for them more often now that I'm more aware of them. I really like the serum foundation and weirdly even though it's the more liquidy formulation I think it's a little bit better in terms of wear. Especially with a good primer. The serum foundation would it would still be there at the end of the day. Um, these are nice and they're inexpensive. If you don't have something that fits the role of a foundation and you don't have a lot of money to spend or you're on a low buy, I recommend The Ordinary. And the, the color selection is pretty decent and they do a good job of letting you know which undertones you're buying. If you have foundations that work for you, you don't need these. So this is the Ardency In Supercharged Smooth Ride Eyeliner in Gold. And I absolutely loved using this because of the tone. It's fun that it had a little sparkle in it because it's like a shimmery gold, but it was more just this bronzy color as an eyeliner that I found really enjoyable to use. I felt like I could be really messy with it all over the lash line and all over the lower lash line, and it would define my eyes but without being too harsh and it would blend really well into other looks, into shimmery looks. I'm used to using either a dark brown or a black for an eyeliner or a dark burgundy. Those are like my three go-to's and that's all I've ever really made good use of. I've never really branched out into slightly more creative or editorial shades for eyeliner. Anyway, this is another one I can't imagine I'm gonna stop reaching for. I loved the looks that I created with it. I loved the way that it worked in tandem with the Marc Jacobs palette. And I also used this in that blush draping demonstration. It was a blush draping demonstration, but I also put on an all shimmer eye using this product as a base and using this as my eyeliner. So if you watch that video you'll be able to see what I mean about kind of like a messy smudgy application of this glimmery bronze gold eyeliner. One that I didn't really enjoy as much is the Buxom Full On Lip Polish in Dolly. I just had this little mini of it and I don't know what it is. It might be the shade but it always made me feel like my lips looked kind of sloppy and not in a good way. It would do some plumping, but then it would slightly irritate outside of my lip line in a way that with certain lip plumping products I like because it makes the lips look bigger. This would do that and then something about the color and the way that it affected or interacted with the natural color of my lips it almost, it's like it emphasized the lines in my lips or it wasn't flattering. I just, I don't know. I just, I never, I threw it on the floor and I'm not going to pick it up. I never liked the way my lips looked when I just wore that product on its own. And that was why I picked it for my Shop My Stash because I never used to wear it on its own. I would just use it to plump up my lips and then I would put another product on top. And I wanted to find out 
how it would look if it was just worn as a gloss and the answer is that I don't like how it looks. Just to make the point that it's it's not that I don't like plumping glosses, I have an alternative to offer you which is this Sephora lip plumper. This is the Sephora Outrageous Plump Effect lip gloss. It's a very very stimulating plumping gloss and I really like how my lips look with this. I use this in the same capacity, like I'll put it on to prep my lips for something else, but I'll also sometimes wear this on its own and I love how it looks. So there's something about either the color, Dolly, or the formula of the Buxom product that just doesn't suit me. And I wish I could tell you more, I wish I knew what it, it was. I think that it might have to do with the, the combination of the color and whatever kind of shimmery particles are in that gloss. Okay, I'm done talking about that lip gloss. Are you ready for me to stop talking about that lip gloss? Because I'm stopping. Sort of moving on, there were two lip sticks in my Shop My Stash last time. One was NARS Audacious. <laughs> One was the NARS Audacious lipstick in the color Catherine, and the other was the Velvet Matte Lip Pencil in Famous Red, which is what I have on my lips right now. I didn't wear these, I feel like, enough. I, especially compared to the other products. I got so much use out of the other products, and I really got to know them. And these, I just didn't, I didn't wear. Um, I think I wore Catherine once, or maybe I only wore it to film that video. I'm not sure. In any case, I'm rolling them over. So we're moving on now to the new products, the things I'm shopping my stash for this time. I shopped my stash for my Wet n Wild Comfort Zone palette. I am really into an all shimmer eye look right now and this is an all shimmer palette so I'm actually hoping to film a demonstration of like a quick wearable editorial all shimmer eye look using this palette so keep an eye out for that over the next couple of weeks. I enjoy this palette I don't reach for it as often as I should given how much I enjoy it so it's a perfect candidate for Shop My Stash. I'd like to get to know it better. I also picked out this NARS face palette Oh, I didn't show you the comfort zone. I mean, you guys know what it looks like. So that's comfort zone. And this is the NARS palette. This one in the upper corner is a gold highlighter. That's one of the only really gold-toned highlighters that I have, and I'm wearing it today on top of, actually this, so I'm actually wearing a lot of this stuff today. I'm wearing comfort zone on my eyes, but I did use a bronzer in my crease, a, a matte bronzer, so this isn't an all shimmer eye look. It's just comfort zone on top of a bronzer. And then as my actual bronzer, blush, whatever, I'm, I used this bronzy color in the NARS palette. And what this is, it's the unfiltered one. I actually think this might still be available. I know it was limited edition, but it might still be available. Obviously I'll link it, I'll find out. And these are things I don't usually reach for. I don't usually go for a gold highlighter because I'm so fair. I don't usually go for such a bronzy bronzer, again, because I'm so fair. I tend to go for blush or peachier things in that capacity. So it'll be fun. And then and then like the colors. I mean it's just NARS. It's classic NARS. The colors are all beautiful. I hope to use all of them more than once. I hope to do some slightly editorial looks with this palette. I'm really excited to dig into this palette. It's one of my favorite things that I own. It's so beautiful. It's so precious like a jewel. And yet it's been months since I effing touched it. What is wrong with me? And then lastly, and I'm not wearing this today, I picked out this Anastasia Beverly Hills eyeliner. It's also gold, like the one from Ardency Inn, but it's a very, very, very pale metallic gold. Can you see that? It's 
so pretty. So this is interesting because it reads, as you can tell, as like a bright white silver type of thing. It It's not going to work as sort of a slightly different darkening eyeliner. Like this, I just used this the same way that I use black and brown eyeliners and it kind of had the same effect. Slightly softer, slightly more editorial, but generally the same type of thing. This is not like that. This isn't going to darken my waterline. It's going to light up my waterline. So that'll be just interesting. I, I rarely reach for it because of that because that's not usually what I'm trying to do and so I'm looking forward to finding out how I can work that into some eye looks. I might try to do some creative stuff with it. I know this is a pretty short video. It's been a couple of days of travel and work um, coming back from my residency and I also keep having to switch my batteries out. I've got my battery charger here and the, both batteries are out so what I'm doing is I'm taking one out and charging it until the other one runs out and then switching them back out until the other one runs out. But they're only each charging for like five minutes so then they only last for a couple of minutes and then however long they last is the only length of time that the other one has to charge and then it doesn't last. You can see how it's going. I, I need to stop filming. but um, I'm excited about these products. This is a good group. And yeah, I have the Comfort Zone palette on my eyes. I have the Nar Narcissist um, Unfiltered One Cheek Palette on my face. And I'm wearing the NARS Velvet Matte Lip Pencil in Famous Red. So this is one possible look or some of the products you can see on me that I'll be working with over the coming weeks. I, I guess I don't have anything <laughs> else to say except that shopping my stash has been one of the, the greatest joys of this no buy year. It really has been providing me with a kind of gratification that's so different from shopping with money. Partly because I'm not spending money, but also just because I picked these products out for a reason. Like I bought these products for a reason and it's sad that those reasons fade so quickly. They, that we get tricked into wanting the next best thing instead of just dwelling with the reason that we bought the products that we bought. I like these things extra because they're mine. They belong to me, they define my makeup style and I feel good, like spending time with them and remembering myself, the self that purchased this, the vision that that self had. It's like, not to get all like weirdly spiritual about makeup, although isn't that what my channel is all about? I should rename my channel, Hannah Gets Weirdly Spiritual About Makeup. Shopping my stash to me is like a way of going deeper into the self. Instead of looking outside of the self, for joy and gratification, it's like going into the self and finding the joy and gratification that already lives inside the self. It really does feel like that. It's like the makeup version of that. And it's so joyful. It's so gratifying. It's ridiculous to me that I've gone through so many years of my life without doing this. At this point in my Shop My Stash project, that's what I need to say. Like I, that, that's like the message that I need to give is it's awesome. It's awesome and it works and I hope you will try it. That is it. Thank you so much for watching this hot mess of a video. I will be back with something more composed and hopefully more extensive on Saturday, no, Sunday. And whatever you have on your plate this week, don't forget to take extra good care of yourself so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world. <laughs>